Uh, Brian Robson, um, for me, he was like uh, he was like my dad in football. Yeah, he was a real two go to person, real real man management for me. And he, he had the lot, he had that, he had the caring side, but he had also the ruthless streak as well. Oh, Janino. I think a lot's made about um, about how good he was, but he, he, what he did in training was was something special. To then be able to replicate that in the game was. Uh, was, was 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 just surreal. The only negative is I wish he hadn't come back the second time because I, he just wasn't the same when he was here the first time. He was he was everything and more. Probably say Fester or Big Nige. You know what I mean? Two defenders who no nonsense in training, didn't give you anything, didn't give you a spare second. Um, were physical, were demanding, vocal. Uh, they had a lot scared you to death, but but had you back as well. So it was uh, it was nice because you can train as you want to play. And, uh, they didn't really become any worse opponents than probably those two. Uh, I'll probably go Yap Stam and Sol Campbell for two different reasons. Yap had everything, he had speed, he had power, and Sol was just a mad mountain. Uh, didn't get much change out of him. He had just some extra, he had just some on me where I just couldn't uh, always had to go and probably blame the other side to try and get any joy out of the, out of the performance at that time. Probably playing for my hometown club as a Stockton lad and a, a Middlesbrough fan, you know, watching at Essen Park and seeing him progress through at the Riverside. I think there's no better feeling than, than scoring a red shirt and scoring at the Riverside and probably playing for my country as well. I thought I'd say proud Englishman and to be able to wear the three lines was, uh, was something special as well. Um, probably the new Dennett, no well. Uh, very intimidating. There's not probably a nice word to say about it. Everything from the moment you walk in to the moment you leave, which couldn't come any sooner from when I walked in the door really, it was brutal, the, the abuse that I got. I enjoyed St James's Park and uh, White Hart Lane, I thought the atmosphere was quite electric at all, I think that the fans are passionate, a little bit like Middlesbrough fans and, and things, so yeah, it's a um, nice place to play and I think we've got quite a lot of joy as well during my career, so it's uh, always nice, nice places to play that you get some nice results. <laughs> Probably Big Nige, I think he, he demanded excellence from everybody and he, he, he came in the time at a really good time for the club. Yeah, I think he, he, he drove everybody from the front. <laughs> Played Leicester City away, we got beat 2-1, I scored at Filbert Street. Um, just ball came over my head, uh, I think it was Paul Ince who played it in, and just took it over and, and, and just lashed it in for about 25-30 yards past, uh, I think it was Ian Walker. Got some good goals, but that was, that was probably one more always sticks out. <laughs> Uh, our person has got to be my debut uh, at the Riverside. It was a good Friday against Sheffield Wednesday to wear that red shirt in front of a crowd. Obviously, first season, season at the Riverside, full house. It was just a, a dream come to moment. Um, I'd be lying if I didn't say anything that I am a Middlesbrough through and through. I bleed red and, and uh, I'm a Middlesbrough boy. 96 97, the one with the transporter bridge, you know what I mean? My debut shirt in the red and my full debut shirt, which uh, I wore against Liverpool. So it's, yeah, it's. it's it's got to be those. I did like the um, sky blue and white stripe one. I just thought it was it was quite different. Uh, probably Gavin Licker, um, goal scorer, scored all his goals. Obviously, the, the World Cup in Mexico for me was probably a pivotal moment in, in growing up and realising that I want to be a footballer and seeing him get the golden boot and scoring all them goals and, and things. But probably Middlesbrough-wise, it was probably Bernie. Um, I said, quite lucky now that I, I get an opportunity to speak to him. And, and um, still quite in awe of those kind of moments, but yeah, just to see him stand on the whole gate and, um, and celebrate with the Middlesbrough fans was something that I, I really wanted to do myself. I do like my rugby, uh, brought up with my dad by uh, by watching a lot of it, probably uh, the All Blacks and, and just see, watching the Hackham and stuff, so it's probably those kind of sports for me. Probably just call under a hole for both, to be fair. But if I, if I really had to pick one, I'd probably have to play for Sunderland because if I said the other one, I'd, uh, I don't think I'd get out, out alive by anybody. I'd love to get back into professional football. Uh, if that's with with the women and, and, and doing what I'm doing, then, then great. But yeah, I, I, I think now I've got an appetite for football again. Well, probably a bit of both, but I do like a bit of spice at the minute. So if I was picking one right now, right today, I'd probably go hot shot.